Hey everyone, and welcome to Bison Catholic Night. this week is the bike race. Make sure you go on to bisoncatholic.org to register for the race and then log your miles on either Friday or Saturday. Get the sick t-shirt so make sure you do that and make sure you also join a team and pay your $25 registration fee. This week on Bison Catholic Night we are going to be hearing a talk from Trey Stevens, one of our focused missionaries. <laughs> Yeah, Lexi, he did. did you even tell him your name to begin with? I didn't, Trey. What's your name? <laughs> My name is Lexi Rush, and I'm a junior here at Bison Catholic. I'm also a peer minister. So, uh, thanks for joining us, Trey. Uh, I don't know how this is along the lines of social distancing, but... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I thought I was in the area, so I, I just thought I'd stop in the studio and hop on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, tonight, Trey is going to be talking about how to evangelize your family. Yeah, I am super excited to share with all of you um, just a couple tips and then an awesome uh, video call with my parents about our experience of evangelization in our family. So I know a lot of you students are, you know, obviously stuck at home with your families during this time of the pandemic and you guys were reaching out just wondering how to evangelize your family. So we are going to jump into the tips now. Does that sound good? That sounds like a plan. Sweet. All right. Here's tip number one. Pray for them. Uh, we know the story of St. Monica and St. Augustine. She prayed for St. Augustine for 30 plus years. That was the most important thing that you can do for your family um, in helping to evangelize them. So I would just uh, advise you to spend some time each day praying for your family, especially during this time of the pandemic. Tip number two, invite them into your lives. You never know what they might say. Um, although your siblings probably said no to anything that you ever invited them to for the first 20 years of your life, they might say yes to the simple invitation to you uh, spending some time in prayer, you reading the Bible, or you hopping on a uh, call with your friends back from college and you guys talking about your faith. So I just encourage you guys to invite them because you never know what they, what they might say and the power of an invitation is more than you'll ever know. Tip number three, be an example. Your actions speak louder than words. I know from personal experience when I was at home with my parents, I didn't have to say anything big. I didn't have to know all these things about the faith, but my actions actually spoke louder than anything that I ever could have said. So I just encourage you to um, live out your faith uh, with your actions uh, when you're around your family at home. Tip number four, that was weird, but uh, <laughs> you don't need to know everything. Uh, none of us do anyways, but I can guarantee you that you knowing facts uh, will convert your parents or your family a lot less slower than you showing them love. Um, and your love is more important than any of the big facts you might know. Yeah, the things that you know about the church are very important, but uh, they should not take precedence over your actions um, and your love. Tip number five, like I just said, love them. That's the most important piece, guys. Um, it is so important to show love in whatever you do. Um, if you do something without love, then it really means nothing. And I know that's pretty blunt and brutally honest, but that's the truth. If we do nothing um, out of love, then we really, yeah, we're just uh, falling flat on our face. So I would just encourage you all to uh, love them. Go out of your way to serve them, um, and they will notice these things. They will see these things, and they will want to uh, love you and love those around them and ultimately love God even more. So um, in this time... Uh, just show a lot more love um, to your family, and I'm sure that it'll make a difference. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Trey, for those five tips. Uh, did you say earlier you were going to uh, hop on a Zoom call with your family? Yeah, I'm actually going to do it here pretty soon. Wow. Well, go ahead and do it right now. All right, let's do this Awesome. Thing. I haven't seen my parents in so long. I'm so excited to be honest, guys. All righty. Hey, guys. Hi, Trey. Hi, Trey. How's it going? Good. Hey. How are Good. you? Good. I'm doing well. Doing well. The uh, the weather is uh, getting better up here in North Dakota. The snow is finally melting. So. Uh, well, we had to... six to eight inches the other day. So. Well, glad you're getting it. We're not. So, 
Uh, so yeah, we I just finished giving the talk to uh, all the students about how to evangelize their families uh, at home in this time of the uh, coronavirus. Um, and so my hope is that we can chat for a couple minutes here and just talk about our experience together. Um, but just want to give you guys, uh, students, uh, kind of a background. Um, yeah, I during college, uh, I guess growing up, yeah, we are we were Catholic, um, but. Um, Definitely for me personally, like I know we like we would pray sometimes, but for me personally, like the faith uh, wasn't always like the top priority, um, but that was always something there. Um, we didn't miss mass often, but uh, we know like when we had a sporting event or something like that, uh, that sometimes took precedence. And so just growing up, we, um, yeah, we lived in the faith, but maybe didn't always make it the top priority. And so going to college, I was just, yeah, I would say I was pretty lukewarm and I stopped going to mass for a while. Um, but then I went through a really big change, a change where I knew that I needed to make Jesus the center of my life. Um, and so that's kind of the background story to our, our family um, and uh, just our experience. Um, and so I got the chance to come home and spend a summer with my parents. Um, and this is really, I think, where the change began, um, where we all kind of started to take leaps and bounds towards our faith. So I'm going to ask them a couple questions um, about, uh, yeah, just our experience together as a family and how, how we were able to live out the faith and how we were to, able to evangelize each other. So um, first off, though, before we do that, just introduce yourselves um, and your names. Well, I'm Trey's mom. My name is Teresa. And I'm Trey's dad. And my name is Todd. Yes, we all have names that start with T's. I also have a brother that his name is Taylor. So um, I don't know how we we made that work, but I'm not the parent, so they figured it out. So they didn't want you to feel left out, Trey. It wasn't planned. To, they didn't want me to feel left out. That's fair. Um, so we're going to hop into this because uh, we we don't got much time here. But uh, the first question that I just want to ask you guys, and by all means, you both um, can answer. Uh, what ways did I inspire you guys to live out your faith more? Well, for me, I know as your mom, um, your dad and I sent you and your brother to Catholic schools, hoping that that would be where you would learn your, your faith. Didn't know at that time that it was really our responsibility to be the ones to model that for you. So when you came home and shared where you were at in your life, which as parents, we know we don't always know where our kids are at in their lives until they share that with us. And with your courage, you chose to do that that summer that you came home, and that taught us that um, you maybe weren't as um, invested into living a Christ-centered life as maybe we thought you had been. And so hearing your authentic story and seeing um, the decision that you'd made to begin to live a Christ-centered life, um, the first thing that I really noticed was a greater sense of calm in your life, um, a greater sense of peace, um, a pretty quick um, decision to begin to detach from kind of the worldly pleasures, which I thought was really, really inspiring for me as your mom, knowing that you were growing up in a culture at your age of 22, where it's so easy to fall into that secular mindset, and just watching how quickly you were able to pull yourself out of that by letting Christ be the center of your life was really, really mesmerizing and very, very inspiring to me. Nice. Dad? Well, I tell you, you know, as being the father of the household and being a cradle Catholic, I thought I was doing things the correct way. Uh, and in some ways we were, but in a lot of ways I wasn't as the man of the house and leading my family in faith. Uh, watching you and your transformation, Trey, through all this in the last few years has been just amazing to me. And it really opened up my eyes to where I was in my own faith, which as I took a deep look at it, wasn't where I needed to be as a father. And watching you grow has helped me understand that I need to do more of that and be the man of the household that, you know, like Joseph, that really practices faith, lived his faith, uh, brought his family to the faith. And as, uh, as we move forward, it, it inspired me to do that and do a better job of it. And, you know, I wish I would have done it sooner, but I'm glad I'm doing it now. Um, so, yeah, that's been very inspiring for me. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, thankful to God that, yeah, he did it uh, at least some point in our lives. Right. Um, and that mm-hmm. we were able to experience this together. Um, and then uh, second and last question uh, that I just want to ask you guys um, as a result uh, of that, like me inspiring you guys and just us being together. Uh, yeah. What have you, what have you guys began to do or have you been doing uh, to grow in your faith? So like some practical things that you guys can do. I think the first thing that really struck me was when you called me and now I believe it's, fair to say that that was the morning the Holy Spirit came into your heart and soul. And I think when I listened to you describe that experience, it allowed me to go back and really start connecting the dots in my life and see when the Holy Spirit had been talking to me, but didn't realize that that was the Holy Spirit. So that was the first thing that really moved me and changed me was to really start paying attention to that and being able to give credit to God in areas of my life where I thought it was my education or my experience or, you know, life um, giving me those, those open doors. And now I realize that that was really, you know, God working all along Um, in terms of how it's inspired me and motivated me is again, just watching you Trey and seeing how it's such a young stage in your life. um, You've been able to make changes day in and day out um, has just motivated me to, you know, pay greater attention to understanding the mass, um, taking advantage of as many, small groups as I can. We're blessed with being at a, at a parish that offers that, going to adoration, just, you know, you going to daily mass. I was like, wow, I can't believe our son is modeling for us what we should have been modeling for him. But again, that was such an amazing gift that you gave us seeing that going to daily mass, your devotion to prayer, your um, saying the rosary, um, just the peace that that was bringing to your life and just the change that we saw in you. Um, just inspired me to say there's no reason I can't be doing that. Um, yes, we allow life to get in the way and maybe we had greater responsibilities at this stage in our life than you did in your early 20s, but um, it, it forced me to realize that I don't have any excuses. And so um, the majority of my life right now is you know, spent with getting up and putting God first. Um, just seeing how you do that has greatly inspired me. Yeah. And I think it's uh, along the same lines for me um, with the help of your mother pushing me, which I needed to be pushed. Um, and, you know, thinking that I've got a job, I, I don't have time. Um, I really had to step back and look at that. And by putting God first, by getting up early in the morning and, you know, doing prayers and saying the rosary with your mother every morning. Uh, and even when I'm on the road, uh, I called your mom the other day and, and you said the rosary while I was on the road. Uh, it inspires me. There's a sense of calm that I've, that I really didn't feel before. Um, being, getting involved with our parish, like your mom said, uh, it's just been amazing. Um, the transformation you get when you get around people that are of the same beliefs and want the same thing for their lives and their families uh to be able to talk to those people some of the my best friends right now are men's from our parish uh it, it's just an amazing thing that uh, you know one of the first groups i ever signed up for was called top gun and your mom said are you going to sign up for a small group oh yeah okay well most of them are like a, a four to six week program and I put my name on the line and got home, found out it's a nine month deal. Well, I tell you what, I gave birth to my faith. I, it was so great that I did it again and I actually co-led a group. So for me, just getting involved, staying involved, watching you do that in your life, uh, inspired me to do it in mine and your mother inspired me to do it. And, and above all, God and the Holy spirit come into my life, which is just amazing. And I will continue to do that. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I think there's some really great practical ways that I've seen you guys live out your faith and uh, yeah, you guys have inspired me probably more than I've even inspired you um, just to see that you guys are able to do this um, as, you know, busy adults that have, uh, you know, a lot of responsibility. So um, yeah, this wraps up our time together with my, with my parents. Uh, I know that everyone at home is waving by just as I am waving by to you guys as well. It's so glad 
so great to talk to you. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks um, when all this stuff starts to slow down a little bit. So thank you guys so much for hopping on the call and sharing just your witness to Jesus Christ. And our Welcome. God bless you all. Love you, Trey, and God bless all of you, and keep the faith and stay safe. Keep doing what you're doing. Love Wonderful. you guys. Take care. Hey, Trey, how was that? Zoom call with family. It was so good. My parents loved it, I think. I awesome. hope you guys did too at home. I don't know. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for um, talking to us at Bison Catholic this week. And thank you guys for tuning in to Bison Catholic Night. Of course. See you guys later. Bye.